so we've got some new toys in the mail today. Not sure if you can see. A monitor, keyboard, and a mouse. So what are we building today? Today we'll be exploring an interesting hybrid setup for content creation and gaming. We're not building anything exactly, but um, I'll be giving these products and setting this up on my desk to give them a try and also give you guys my first impressions and thoughts on these items. So in part one of this video, I'll be talking about the monitor and then subsequently in part two of the video that will be coming out sometime next week, I'll be sharing my first impressions on the keyboard and the mouse. But before we get into the video, as always, if you have not liked the video, I would truly appreciate if you drop a like on the button down here. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, but you like the content that I'm doing, I would also be very happy if you could, you know, subscribe to this channel. So without further ado, let's get into the unboxing. Introducing the ASUS ProArt 27-inch IPS monitor. So yes, you heard me right, even though the words seem a little strange coupled together. Because for those of you familiar with the ASUS brand, you'll know that it is one of the leading gaming brands in the industry. But this monitor is interesting. We're talking about a ProArt creator kind of monitor. So to start off with the physical features, the monitor comes with extremely good ergonomics design, able to adjust the height, tilt, pivot and swivel as well. It also comes with a quick release stand that allows easy access. The buttons are on the front of the monitor, a rather bold design choice with an interesting ruler feature for design work. The monitor also comes with thin bezels along the edges so you can potentially achieve a multi-monitor setup. So for those of you who have seen my first one or two videos in this YouTube channel, you know that I am a commercial director in my day job. Clearly content creation on YouTube and even like commercial work is pretty much what I do daily. Which is why I want to take the next few minutes to talk a little bit about the color features of this ProArt monitor. So the ASUS ProArt display monitor comes factory pre-calibrated with an industry-leading Delta E less than 2 color accuracy that ensures that the color displayed on screen matches the input of your you know, RAID digital cinema cameras or even your DSLRs. It is a little technical even for myself, but what you need to know is that it is back-tested and within the sRGB range, it is a 100% color accuracy. So if you just Google color ranges, you'll see various color space profile uh, within a color spectrum. So you have Adobe RGB, you have sRGB, you have DCI-P3 or even Lyrec 2020. So I would say that the 100% sRGB color accuracy is relatively decent for regular content work for YouTube and you know just vlogs if you're doing vlogs and travel stuff you know. For non-commercial work I think sRGB is perfect but if you're looking to do high-end commercial work this might not be very suitable for you because if you look at monitors with DCI-P3 color spaces or even um, Adobe RGB color spaces uh, which would be important for people like colorists doing high-end commercial work. So adding on to that point this is also an 8-bit monitor with a 315 nits brightness cap. So again, this is suitable for you know DSLRs, you know shooting in 4K. But if you're doing professional work using you know the RAID digital cinema cameras, the RE or even the Canon C100 to 300 models, uh, this monitor would not be able to you know really display the 4 to 2 10-bit dynamic range. So do keep that in mind. So just to make things a little different and more fun, I thought I would show you a live color grading session and then I'll share my thoughts on using this display monitor. Okay, so right now I have a project open up on DaVinci Resolve. So this is a project I directed uh, sometime last year um, for a brand. So this is shot on the Red Gemini. Um, it's in RAW. Every frame, it's a single image. So also for DSLRs, I always encourage shooting in log because that captures a wider color gamut and gives you a little bit more information than your standard Rec. 709. So think of it as like a painting, you know. Once you have the colors baked in, if you were to paint over a, a painting that it's already very saturated and have all the colors baked in, it would be pretty difficult to, you know, just add on a little bit more colors and, you know, make adjustments. But on the other hand, if you have a painting that it's a bit muted, you know, blend in colors, that's where you can do more post-production work so by coloring over it and you know adjusting so right now i'm just going to do a quick color grade on this um, image here this clip here to show you the dynamics of this monitor so since it's raw i will always start with a 3d lot to 709 just as a start once it's baked in um, you can see that it looks a little bit more like real life. The good thing about shooting in RAW and cinema cameras is that all this information are captured so, so you can really push the boundaries in terms of adjusting the gain and you know the color saturation, the hue, etc. So we're gonna start by lowering the gains. Now up the lift just so that it's a bit more balanced. So I'll start with just balancing the image. 
temperature. So this is the first node is always a kind of like a white balance. I will open the next node. So right now in the first node we have a very basic you know Rec 709 kind of look. I will then move on to make further adjustments. So maybe I will go and do my curves. So I will soften the highlights, maintaining the rest, and then I'll open the new node. And then the next one I'll do um, selective or secondary correction. So in some parts of the image, I can see that there is a very teal tone, uh, possibly because of the glass where the light passes through. So I want to reduce that. So what I can do is I can use my qualify tool to select. And there you can see it's, and there you can see it's slightly selected and then you can make further adjustments. So you can see that DaVinci does a very great job at, you know, um, highlighting secondary colors. So what I want to do is I want to reduce the two and then I will shift the gamma. So right now you can see that the teal is so much more reduced. So it's a really great way of, you know, doing secondary on the Vigi Resolve. So if you look at the before and the after, you can look at this part before and after. Um, right now, based on what I see on the monitor, I think it's pretty accurate. I've actually done a test uh, prior to this already on other kinds of footage. Even the video that you're watching right now, the talking parts, I've already exported it and colors displayed on the phone, on my MacBook. It's really accurate to what is displayed on screen. So I think in terms of color accuracy, this monitor does a pretty good job at that. So right now I can go ahead and do further more secondary. So I tend to up the skin tones. So you can see as the scene moves, the skin tones are selected. So the more proper and more tedious way is to actually mask out every part so that it only selects the skin tones and not the other parts of you know the cabinets and stuff. In view of time, I'm just gonna quickly skip that step. I'm just gonna show you how I do secondaries here. So that is essentially a basic color correction and grade. Um, there are some other techniques that you can apply, uh, more notes you know, to further grade the scene, but I'm just gonna stop here. So even though the color accuracy is pretty decent on this monitor, but because this is a SDR monitor, and only an 8-bit monitor, it is unable to display the full red raw 10-bit kind of dynamic range on this clip. So I would say that's a downside of this monitor. So after doing a test session on this monitor, I would say that the colors and accuracy are pretty decent. Coming from HDR monitors, the SDR part might come off, you know, in a way looking a little low res if you're very particular about details and resolution. So the USP of this monitor is the ProArt palette feature, which allows you to adjust parameters such as hue, saturation, white balance, and even gamma. So this might be useful for video creatives. On top of that, there are also aspect ratios or reference guides, grid lines within um, the front panel. So if you press the buttons, you are quick, can quickly access these aspect ratio guides or rule of thirds per se. So for those of you who are using dual monitor setup, this could potentially be a second monitor. So if you want to quickly adjust the, you know, you want to do like reframing and recomposition, you can quickly just press a button or two, you can get into the rules of third to see a, a reference guide for your frame. So since we're talking about a hybrid setup, a content creation slash gaming kind of setup, I like to highlight that the monitor supports up to a 75 Hertz refresh rate. It is not particularly impressive if you are looking for a pure gaming setup. Um, but if you're someone who prioritize more media work than gaming, and you're just doing like casual gaming, 75 Hertz is pretty okay. But if you're looking to do competitive gaming or you're just a, you know more of a gamer than a video person, then you might want to look for a monitor that offers up to maybe a 120 Hertz or 144 Hertz refresh rate. So it really depends on your day-to-day -day use. So closing thoughts. All in all, I think that 2K monitors are kind of like the baseline of what you should be going for in today's work environment, especially, you know, the work from home, you know, you're doing work and also you're using the computer for your own personal use. 2K resolution should really be the baseline feature that you're looking to have on your monitor. So one good thing is that I can clearly see that the brand is trying to innovate and move towards a, you know, a creator kind of target audience because we all know that ASUS is a, a very established gaming uh, brand. So having that balance between the product features and a somewhat above average 
refresh rate. I think that is kind of like a good start. So for what it's worth, I think this is a pretty decent monitor. Uh, you have the Pro Art features on one hand and the 75Hz refresh rate. All in all, nothing that I'm complaining about other than the fact that I'm not really used to the SDR range on this monitor. I would uh, much prefer a HDR range monitor um, at this point in time. So the only annoying thing is that uh, when I was doing the unboxing, I realized that the power cable is not the traditional 3-pin plug that we're used to uh, in Singapore and thankfully I have you know tons of like cable so it's not a big problem but you know just something for you to take note and perhaps the team can use this to improve the feedback from here. So we've come to the end of part one of this video. Remember I'm talking about a content creation slash gaming setup but in part two of this video I'll be reviewing the ROG Streak Impact 2 wireless mouse as well as the ROG Fashion keyboard. So I'm really excited about these two items because you know that I'm more of a keyboard person. So thanks for sticking with you. I hope this review has been helpful. Let me know in the comments down below, you know, what kind of content you like to see on this channel. And as always, stay safe and I'll see you in part two of this video.